Hello there to those of you seeking truth. My name is Derek, and today I will be sharing with you some of my research into the scripting of NFL games, particularly the one played on Thursday, December 8th, between the Kansas City Chiefs and Oakland Raiders. Although proof may be an arbitrary term, what I am about to show you, in my opinion, does prove that these games are not only predetermined, but are a theatrical production that follows a script on just about every play, down to the yard on the field, down to the very second on the clock, not unlike a WWE event. As I'm assuming most of you are familiar with Zachary K. Hubbard's work in the fields of gametria and numerology, I'll skip the basics of these calculations and direct you newcomers to Zach's YouTube page, where he has some great tutorials. The man is a teacher by trade, and will get you up to speed pretty quickly. Real quick, just a little bit about me. I came across Zach's work earlier in 2016, and while I found it intriguing, it took me a while to accept that the level of manipulation was as high as it was. Recent events, such as the fact that a guy like Donald Trump is actually in line to be the president, and the ever-so-transparent attack on fake news triggered some action in me. You know, most people who brush those who are awake off by saying, how many people would have to be in on it? Someone would blow the whistle. Oh yeah? Even if their life or the lives of loved ones depended on their secrecy? If you can accept that a football game, which would require over 100 people, and probably a lot more, to be in on it, that one of these could be rigged, then maybe you can begin to accept what else might be a farce in our world. The more asleep you are, the crazier this all sounds, but I assure you, the corruption does run this deep. Now, I do a fair amount of programming at work, and saw a great need for advancement in Gematria research. I wound up making my own program in Microsoft Excel, which I will be using a little bit in this video. It's called the Gematronator, and will soon be widely available after the launch of the Truth For All website. It's far superior to any existing research tools online, and I'll be looking to make it available online as the project picks up some steam. Seeing the benefits of this tool, Zach has begun making use of it already, and was also gracious enough to allow me to present to you some of my research. To begin, it is important to understand that the focal numbers that were paid tribute during this game, and the ones I will be discussing, are not just some random numbers we noticed patterns for during and after the game. In fact, the sequences these numbers relate to are not random either. The three mentioned in this video are the same original three sequences that I actually included in the Gometronator. With very little decoding, these numbers were discovered prior to the game. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever seen such a strong alignment going into any one game before. It's also important to understand that the NFL participates in synchronicity. That is, themes from contemporary news stories carry over into the games quite frequently. This concept manifested itself this past week in a blatantly obvious way. On December 2nd, a warehouse fire in Oakland supposedly killed 36 people. Naturally, the federal government now looks to crack down on illegal artist spaces, can't let any disaster go to waste, by restricting more of our freedoms in the name of safety. While I won't speculate on whether or not anyone really died in that fire, I will state with certainty that it is a psychological operation at the very least. Two days after the fire, the Oakland Raiders played the Buffalo Bills and won with 38 points. Fire and death in simple gametria and Raiders in reduced all equals 38. Six days after the fire, they're on primetime national television playing against a team named the Chiefs, like fire chiefs, wearing all red uniforms. Kansas City equals 122 in English ordinal, and Oakland sits on the 122nd meridian. Now, in reduced gametria, Oakland equals 22, and Chiefs equals 41. Notice how the gametria for the Chiefs lines up with the date of the fire as well, as does Kansas City. Now, whatever the group that's organizing these stage shows calls themselves are staunch numerologists. And because this wasteful tier of society has so much time on their hands, they play us for fools by placing these patterns right where your eyes can see them. If there's any one indicator that tells us society is being intentionally broken down, it's the fact that so many people, once confronted with a relatively simple math problem, cannot tell you fast enough how bad they are at math as if it's just not worth their time to be able to do a second calculation without writing the first one down. 
But really, people are just afraid of being wrong and looking foolish. Everybody has the ability to do math in their head, it just takes practice. You're not finishing a marathon on your first try either. Anyway, these numerologists use the birthdays of the quarterbacks and coaches, probably others on the team, in addition to their career or franchise records, and even their name gematria. Significant things often occur when there are parallels or connections, and the key sequence uh, being prime numbers. So let's take a look at quarterback Alex Smith of the Chiefs and see what Zach came up with before the game. So Alex Smith was playing in his 138th career regular season game. Recall the number 38 from before and fire. Earlier this season, Alex Smith was held out from a game against the lowly Jaguars for concern about his head, even though he didn't get a concussion. So it's pretty odd how this number now aligns. Teams usually like to have their starting quarterback on the field. So that's pretty odd. But here's where it gets interesting. Smith's next win would be his 79th career win. 79 is the 22nd prime number, 22 like Oakland. Alex Smith in Gematria sums to 39, 111, and of course 666 in Sumerian. Alex Smith's last birthday was a span of 216 days before the game. 6 times 6 times 6, or 6 to the 3rd, equals 216. The span to his next birthday was 151 days after the game. 151 is the 36th prime number. Now the 36th triangular number is 666. To calculate the triangular number, think about bowling pins. You add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. If you continue all the way up to 36, that's where you land on 666. Also remember, it was 36 people who supposedly died in the Oakland fire. Derek Carr, the quarterback of the Raiders, also lines up to his opponent. His last birthday was a span of 256 days prior to game day. 256th is 2 to the 8th power, a lot like his birth date of the 28th. We'll discuss this number again coming up. But the span to his next birthday is 111 days, just like Alex Smith in simple form. Certainly seems like this is a full circle, so to speak. Now Andy Reid fits into this equation too, and he doesn't fit into a whole lot. But he's trying to get his 41st win for the Chiefs, like Chiefs equals 41. 41 is also the 13th prime, and this is the 113th all-time matchup between the two teams. So guys, an alignment like this to a numerologist is like a buffet to Andy Reid. They just can't help themselves, right? Now let's take a look at what the guy who's playing the beast in this game, 666 boy Alex Smith, did. So here's a list of all of his passes in the game. Now this data is directly from the NFL website and the game book for this game. Now let's just see if we, uh, well, there we go. His first completion of the game goes for 39 yards and it's down to the 36 yard line, so that was fast. Of course, Alex Smith equals 39, keep that number in mind. And we already know about that 36. His second completion goes to DeAnthony Thomas for only one yard. Smith did not throw to Thomas again all game, and it might be because of the number he wears, giving one reception to number 13, like how this is the 113th game between the two teams. Later on in the game, Alex Smith caught his 13th attempt after it was batted at the line, and he ran it for three yards. His third career reception gave him one catch for three yards. He wears number 11, so again you have more 1-1-3 one, one, alignment. Uh, later on, Smith threw his 18th pass for an interception, 18 of course being the sum of 666. Now this left him on 207 yards. Now if I punch 207 into the Gematronator, uh, there it is. 113 is one of only three numbers that sum to 207 when written out. It's actually the first one on the list. Now if you think the practice of spelling a word out to get its sum in Gematria is a waste, you might change your mind by the end of this video. I too was skeptical until very recently. So let's take a look at uh, Smith's third completion. This one was a tribute to Travis Kelsey. Notice how it was Smith's third completion on his fifth pass on third and five. 
the snap came with exactly five minutes on the clock and it was a 15 yard completion of course three times five equals 15. the reason i say that this was a tribute is because travis kelsey was born on 10 5 in the year 1989 giving him birth numerologies of both 15 and 33. when you spell out 33 you get his height six foot six but english gematria gives you 15 15. so that's interesting kelsey also wears number 87 uh, and this connects to 33 as well. By reducing the factors of 3 and 29, you get 3 times 11, or 33. So there's definitely something to this. Uh, I also just learned that Travis Kelsey is the star of a national TV show, similar to The Bachelor. Uh, so all of this makes some sense. To end the first quarter, Smith completed his last two passes for 16 yards each, like 216, or 6 to the third power. Notice he finishes the quarter with 88 yards. Now from my observations, the number 88, and also to a lesser degree, the number 28, these often appear during a time in which things are about to come full circle, as the numerological alignments for this game certainly showed us. 88 also showed up in a few pitch counts uh, in the baseball postseason when the Cubs came full circle, most notably Game 5 of the NLCS when they clinched and then game one of the World Series when number 28, Corey Kluber, left with 88 pitches. And I'll also point out that the Cubs manager, Joe Madden, was born on 2-8, and the manager of the Indians, Terry Francona, was born on 4-22. Of course, 4 times 22 equals 88. Remember, he was also the coach of the Boston Red Sox in 2004 when they broke their curse. Let's take a look at his playing career. It began August 19th, 1981, ended April 19th, 1990. That's exactly eight years, eight months. So in the second quarter, Smith throws for his only touchdown of the game. Of course, it came on his 12th attempt, a multiple of six. Now, this is where you have to step back and appreciate the artistry, as messed up as this all is. The first play of the quarter somehow only took three seconds, but here's why. The snap of the next play came at 14.57 on the clock. 1 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 equals 17. 14 plus 57 equals 71. After Smith threw the touchdown, which of course was for 36 yards, he's got seven completions for 124 total yards. And look at this. His yards per completion now reads 17.71. So that seems like a strange coincidence with some numbers that haven't come up yet, right? Wrong. Check out the 22nd Fibonacci number. It's 17,711. And to cap it off, there's the referee, number 39. Now this reminds me a little bit of what happened on October 23rd this year. This was the same day that 13 people supposedly died, with 31 being injured in a tour bus crash. 10.23, of course, equals 33. October is the only month that sums to 33. In the Colts-Titans game that day, Andrew Luck, of course, Luck equals 233, the 13th Fibonacci. With 13 points on the board, Luck threw a touchdown pass with 10.23 on the clock. The pass was for 37 yards, the 12th prime number, matching his jersey number. It was caught by T.Y. Hilton for the Colts' 13th point of the game. It was Luck's 13th touchdown pass of the year. It gave him exactly 130 passing yards on the day. T.Y. equals 45. 13 spelled out in reduction equals 45. And Hilton equals 33 to boot. The play capped a 6 play 93-yard drive. This was the same day Michael Thomas of the Saints, number 13, born 3393, had 10 catches on 13 targets for exactly 130 yards. And look at that. Here's the touchdown that Hilton scored in that game. The ref is wearing 112. 112 equals Andrew Luck in English ordinal. So I think people should be paying close attention to the referee numbers. I want to point out that the NFL does not disclose who will be refereeing the games up until either game day or shortly before, and they don't really explain why, but 
maybe we're starting to get some clues. So after this play here, where Smith catches his own pass, um, here we get another 666. Now look at this. The clock reads 12.06. 12 plus 6 equals 18. Again, the sum of 666. The play is a third and six, and Kelsey gets his third catch. Now Al Michaels of the announcing team says that he's now got 60 yards, giving us two sixes and two threes, another beast. But there's a mistake. Kelsey only gets to the 46-yard line when I think he was supposed to get to the 45. So here in the game book, it shows that he only has 59 yards. Had he followed the script and gotten to the 45, Alex Smith would have 156 passing yards. 666 typed out equals 156 in simple gamatria. So uh, way to go, Travis. Um, time to get better at football. I'm kind of getting tired of this garbage, but let's keep going. Why not? You'll see Smith's last pass of the half is a 16-yard completion on his 16th attempt with 10.03 or 13 on the clock. That gives him 202 passing yards, like that 22 number that keeps showing up. The last 10 minutes wind down without Smith throwing any more passes in the half. Now, I mentioned Alex Smith's interception earlier. Also notice how it came at 14-15 of the third quarter. Uh, this can be reduced to 11 by adding 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 5, or adding 14 plus 15 into 29, also reducing to 11. Uh, it's an observation of mine that 11s are used as an antagonist to 13s. I don't have a lot of research into that yet, but do keep your eyes open for it. So after a couple of filler plays, here's the last big tribute. In the fourth quarter, the first play, remember Chiefs equals 41, it's the very rare first and 13. You had another 113 and 33 stamp. The 34-yard play takes the Chiefs up to, yep, the 41-yard line. It's Kelsey's fifth and final catch of the game, giving him 101 yards, or an average of 20.2. It's a pretty familiar number, considering Alex Smith just threw his 22nd pass, giving him 253 yards. And wouldn't you know, 253 is the 22nd triangular number. You gotta admit, it's a little impressive. So after one more filler completion to Spencer Ware, Smith's last pass of the game is a four-yard pass to Tyreek Hill. I haven't mentioned him, but this one is pretty obvious. At this point, he's now caught all six of his targets for 66 yards. It's probably worth noting that he wears number 10, and Satan equals 10 in English reduction. That four-yard completion came with eight minutes left, and Alex Smith sat at 264 yards for the remainder of the game, as the Chiefs do not opt to pass again. Uh, 264, uh, that's just 88 times 3. 88, the number that we saw at the beginning of the first quarter. So there it is again. So the game is over, but the connections are not. I'm just going to punch the final score as it appeared on the screen into the Gamatronator. You'll see that 39 is the only number when spelled out that equals 1321 in any form of Gamatria. And of course, look at that, it's the 216th prime number, because why not, right? So look, now that you've been shown how the NFL, especially its primetime games, are nothing more than pure nonsense, albeit witty nonsense, please go ahead and share the knowledge. I personally love the game of football and would love to enjoy watching a real contest, but I'm not sure I know what a real contest looks like. Because instead, we have to deal with these assholes. And you know, the sport of football is incredibly dangerous. One might say the NFL is protecting its players by offering a product that is solely entertainment-driven, and that's not the worst thing in the world. I missed two weeks of school when I was seven from a concussion I got during football, and things were never the same after that. You know, it's my opinion, although a supported one, that kids shouldn't be playing tackle football until they're at least in high school. It's just simply far too dangerous at that age. But the real issue I have is that they are knowingly paying homage to a psychological operation that occurred in Oakland that was designed for and is being used to remove some residential rights that will make it tougher to live off the grid here in America, as many people have been opting to do. Plus, look at this, all right? There was another terror attack in Turkey on Saturday, a day with the 121 revelation numerology, 
1210. And how about this? 38 people dead. 38 equals fire. And what about this? 166 injured? Someone explained to me how two days after the attack, when apparently there are conflicting reports as to how many people actually died, that they can be so precise on a number regarding the number of injured. 166. Well, look at this. Oakland in English gematria equals 166. All right, case closed, guys. Truth seekers, now is the time to become truth speakers. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.